Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one, your husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. X3, X3, hear all about it. Yes, hear about the extra special breakfast treat of the week. It's delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk, sugar or honey, and topped with sliced apples. Yes, just you try it. Man, oh man, it's delicious with a capital D. That's because these giant king-sized kernels are shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. They're so easy to serve, too, crisp and fresh right from the package. Tomorrow, see to it that yours is a breakfast-happy family. Enjoy rice or wheat shot from guns. You'll say it's a treat to eat the one and only Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Young Constable Halliday dropped in at the Golden Horseshoe one night to hear Laurie Wayne sing. And when the girl had finished, she made her way through the crowd to him. Did I sound awful? Oh, you were fine. Oh, I'm tired. Let's sit down here. All right. You look tired. Listen, Laurie, this is no place for you. I know you like to sing, Oh, but... dear. What's the matter? There's Jim. Uh, your brother? Yes. He's starting to play Pharaoh with Smoke. He ought to know better. Smoke's crooked, and Jim will lose every cent he has. Well, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. What? Well, if he doesn't have any money, he'll go back to work. You'll have to admit that Jim's a different man when he's working and when he isn't. He's just young and headstrong, Lee. There's nothing really bad about him. Oh, I didn't say that. But he's no younger than I am. Twenty-five is young. Well, it's time that he settled down. I wish he would. You don't know how I worry sometimes. Yes, I do. I can see it in your face. But it isn't right. It's his temper. I'm afraid that someday he'll lose it and get into some real trouble. If only he wouldn't carry a gun. Laurie. Yes? Look at me. Well? Will you marry me, Laurie? I... But we've only known each other three months. That's long enough. And you're just starting on the fourth. <laughs> well, I'll admit that we won't have much money. But we'll make out fine. Picked a poor time to say anything. Why? Look at Jim over there, Lee. He's losing. Can't you forget him for one minute? No, I can't, Lee. That's just it. I can't think of myself at all as long as I'm worried about him. And it wouldn't be fair to you to ask you to share my worries. I want to, Laurie. You don't feel any sympathy for Jim. You're impatient with him, and, and you feel that he ought to know better. Well, there's no doubt about that. Well, there's your answer. No one can help him who feels like that, and he needs help. So I'm elected, I guess. Answer me this, Laurie. If it weren't for Jim, would you marry me? Yes, Lee, I would. That's all I wanted to hear. I'll straighten him out if I have to use my fists to do it. But that won't work at all, Lee. He can be awfully obstinate, and it won't do you any good that to... that from the bottom of the deck. That's a lie. Oh, Lee, stop them. All right. Nobody can call me a liar and get away with it. Nobody can call me a cheat. Go for your gun. That suits me. I'll teach it. Two guns flashed. Jim turned and fired a third shot at the hanging lamp. The room was plunged into darkness. When Lee reached the table where the shooting had taken place, Jim was gone, and smoke had slumped to the floor. Joe, yeah, Joe, get a doctor. I think it's too late, but get him here anyway. Right. Lee, where are you going? After Jim. He went out the back door after he shot out the lights. No, give him a chance to get away. No, I can't. Please. Uh, he's headed for your cabin to pick up his dog team. I'm going after him. The young constable pushed his way through the crowd in the cafe with Laurie still clinging to his arm. 
They hurried down the main street toward the cabin on the edge of town where the brother and sister lived. A light could be seen in the window. And when Lee threw open the door... What the... Up with your hands, Jim. You're under arrest. Now, just drop those supplies. He won't have any need for them. They're coming to headquarters with me. Oh, Jim, you killed a man. He had it coming to him. What did you think you'd gain by running away? Plenty. It's only a day's trip to the border, and with half an hour's start, I'd been able to make it before anybody caught me. You mean that? That's all I need, sis, half an hour. Lee, no one else knows where he is. You've got to let him go. I can't. But you must. You say that you love me. Now's the time to prove it. It wouldn't prove anything, except that I'd be deserting my duty. Of course I love you. But your brother's killed a man. I've got to arrest him. You want me to marry you, don't you? He's under arrest. If he's tried and convicted... If he goes to the gallows because of you, do you think I could marry you then? Never, Lee. No matter how much I love you, it would always stand between us. What you'd done to my brother. Don't you understand? You aren't the only Northwest Mounted Policeman in town. Let somebody else arrest him. It isn't asking much, Lee. A chance is all I want. Half an hour. And there isn't a man in town who isn't glad that Smoke's dead. He had it coming to him. He was a crook. Well, then why did you get into a faro game with because him? Because it was time somebody put the label on him. Everybody else was afraid of his guns. I didn't mean to shoot to kill, but... Prove that, and you won't hang. How can he prove it? But you believe him, Lee. I can see it in your eyes. I swear I only meant to wing him. It isn't right that Jim should die for someone as worthless as smoke. Oh, I'd be through with a force. And that means as much to me as my life. I can't, Laurie. What do I mean to you? It isn't fair to make me choose. But you've got to do it. One or the other. You've got to choose between me and your duty. If you put it that way, Laurie... Think first. We'll never see each other again. I love you, Lee, and I'm pleading for myself just as much as I'm pleading for Jim. You and I deserve a chance at happiness. Oh, don't throw it away. I could never be happy. If you lost your job. If you were disgraced and kicked off the force. That's exactly right. Well, you don't have to be. What if I'd been waiting for you when you opened the door? One crack over the head and nothing could have stopped me from making my getaway... It isn't too late for that. You're still covered, Jim. I've still got my gun. And if I were to hit you with the butt end of it, just hard enough to leave a mark, if they were to find you bound and gagged, who'd blame you? Who'd ever guess what really happened? Lee, please. Doesn't matter about other people, Laurie. Don't you understand? For a moment, Lee turned his head Don't away you, from Jim. And in that moment, Jim <laughs> sprang forward and brought his gun down on <laughs> the young no. body's head. No. Oh, Lee. He's just knocked out. Now get those flies on the sled while I'm tying him up. Are you sure he isn't hurt badly? Positive. You're coming with me, you know. Why? Because you're in this just as much as I am now. Anybody who helps a criminal escape is an accomplice. A criminal? Oh, Jim. We've got to face it. I'm a criminal and so are you. If you stay here, they'll put you in jail. There's no choice. You've got to come with me. Now hurry with those supplies. Lee was bound and gagged. The supplies were loaded on the sled. And Jim and Laurie drove out of town in the direction of the border. It was an hour later that Sergeant Preston drove into town from the south. He and King had been visiting one of the Indian villages. And the sergeant only learned about the shooting at the Golden Horseshoe after arriving at headquarters. He was the acting chief of the post. And Constable Barton made a complete report to him. And uh, this is the doctor's report. I see. You're sure that Lee went after Jim? That's what everybody in the cafe said. But you've had no word from him? No. Well, my team's still harnessed. I think I'll drive out the edge of town, take a look at Jim's cabin. That's where he'd go first. Sure. You'd need a dog team if you were trying to make a getaway. One key. <laughs> Ten minutes later, the sergeant stopped the team in front of the dark cabin. One king. King, who was working as a loose lead, ran to the door and scratched at it. Step on in there, boy. <laughs> the sergeant tried the door. It was unlocked. He and King entered the cabin. The great dog ran to Lee's side. The sergeant lit the lamp on the table. Then he removed the gag from Lee's mouth. He started to cut the ropes that bound his wrists and ankles. How did it happen, Lee? I, I came here after Jim. Yes? He hit me over the head with the butt of his gun. There you are. Now I'll take a look at your head. Oh, it's all right. Just aches a little. Yes. Nasty bump, though. Here, I'll give you a hand. Thanks. He was waiting for me. I opened the door and... Yes? That isn't the truth. It was my fault he got away. I arrested him and then Laurie... Well, she asked me to give him a chance. 
half an hour's start. You agreed to that? No. No, not exactly. I listened to her, though. I listened to Jim. I didn't go ahead with the arrest. He still had his gun. It was standing right here. I, I turned away from Jim for a moment, and he let me have it. Yeah, it was my fault. You were careless. Yes. That might have been more than that if I'd had the chance. I might have given in. I'm sorry you said that. Uh, I'm not sure, but I might have. For your own good, you're going to have to make sure. How? What do you mean? They've gone. There's no catching them now. Have they planned to head for the border? That's right. Jim said that with half an hour's start, no one could catch him. They must have left over an hour ago. King can catch them, and you and I are going after them, Lee. You and I? Yes. You're going to have to find out if you belong on the force or not. You're going to have to finish making your arrest. You understand, don't you, Sergeant? Jim is Laurie's brother. Laurie's the girl I want to marry. Yes, I know that. If it were you, if you were the one to make the arrest... No, Lee, I sympathize, believe me. But sooner or later, we're all faced with the same decision. Does duty come first or doesn't it? Can we live up to the oath we've taken? Do we have a right to wear the uniform? If I have to arrest Jim, then the answer is no as far as you're concerned. I'm ready, Sergeant. Team's outside. There are plenty of supplies on the sled. We can start at once. I'm ready. Let's go, King. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Everyone loves Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. Yes, everyone loves delicious, ready-to-serve wheat or rice shot from gun. <laughs> Take the rich man, for instance. He says, Money can't buy a finer-tasting breakfast cereal. As for the poor man, listen to what he says. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice makes an inexpensive deluxe family breakfast with milk and fruit. And the beggar man says... When it comes to a handout, make mine the cereal shot from guns. That nut-like flavor is terrific. Now take the thief. He's really not one at all. He's simply the fellow who loves to help himself to a second bowlful when nobody's looking. And naturally, Mom doesn't mind that one bit. And listen to what the doctor says. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nutritious. They furnish restored, natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. They are good for you. And the lawyer? I like the famous Quaker money back with a smile guarantee. It's on every single package. Last but not least, the Indian chief. Ugh. Me trade in bow and arrow any day for gun that shoot Quaker puffed rice, Quaker puffed wheat. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, there you have it, folks. Some mighty good reasons why Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice deserve top spot on your family breakfast table. Just remember, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Always look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. With the great dog King in the lead, the sergeant and Lee Halliday raced along the trail toward the border. But miles ahead, Jim Wayne was urging his team to its greatest speed. Laurie rode the sled, and they traveled all through the night without any stop for rest. Mush! Mush on! They were driving toward Louis Michel's wake cabin. Louis, a happy-go-lucky French-Canadian, was well known as one of the best hosts on the trail. And his large, well-built cabin was a welcome sight to every traveler. That morning, he rose late, just as the winter sun was climbing above the horizon. He hummed to himself as he cooked his breakfast. Oh, it's a good thing not to have guests, Louis. It'd give you fine chance to be lazy. It's good to work, too, but uh, sometime a, a man should have chance to uh, sit back. And uh, think how lucky he is to be alive. <laughs> ah, nice warm cabin, fine food, and uh, plenty of gold dust to buy more. Ah, yes, you are a very lucky man, Louis Michel. Ah, you speak too soon. Traveler, come. 
Oh, that is good, too. <laughs> now you have someone to talk to while you eat. Uh, make the food taste better. Bonjour, mes amis. Uh, you want me to help unharness the team? Uh, the newcomers were rough, heavy-bearded men. And as they walked toward Louis, he had a moment of apprehension. But his naturally trusting nature made it impossible for him to be suspicious for long. And he smiled his welcome as he opened the door wide. Entre. Breakfast. Uh, she will be ready in five minutes. Uh, shut the door, Barney. Okay. You all alone here? Uh, we. Oui. For once, no one stay here. I made no money last night. But that doesn't happen often, does it? Uh, may not. There is always many people. And much money? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, enough for Louis. All right, let's see it. Uh, what do you mean? We're not interested in your food. We want your gold. Your trail robber. That's right. Come on, don't stall around. I will not give you my money. I will show you. I have gone here. No, you don't. Get him, John. I am. Oh! Hey, I think you killed him. I'm sure of it. Now listen, somebody's driving this way. By the door. Yeah, right away. It was Laurie and Jim who were nearing the cabin, and Jim pointed it out to his sister. Look, Laurie. Who does it belong to? Louis Michelle. It's her roadhouse. We can't stop, can we? Well, I don't think we... How much we... farther to the border? 20 miles. Well, then let's go on. The dogs need a rest, and so do you. Oh, I'm all right. No, we'll stop for about four hours. Four hours? We can afford it. We made good time last night. Can't we get some fresh dogs and go on? Well, we might be able to, but you're tired. Oh, nonsense, Jim. There are some dogs in the front of the cabin. Maybe you can borrow those. Yeah. And get something neat, something hot. We'll rest after we cross the border. So we can make it before it gets dark. Well, let's hope so, Laurie. All right, boys, we're pulling in. Pull. That's the idea. Now pull. Pull there. Huh. You unharness the team, Jim. I'll see about getting fresh dogs. No, I'd better go with you. Louie knows me. All right. Funny, the door's barred. There must be somebody here. There's smoke coming out of the chimney. He's opening up. Well? Who are you? What do you want? Where's Louis? Louis ain't around. <laughs> he must be. I can see his parka hanging up on the wall. His dogs are out in the run. What do you mean he isn't around? I said he wasn't here. Let him come in. Huh? It's all right. Let him come in. Okay, come on in. Who are you two? What difference do names make? Where's Louis? You'd better take our word for it, mister. He isn't here. Up with your hands. I've got you covered. What the... Oh, Jim. It's all right, sis. Now, listen, you two. We want some food and some fresh dogs, and we're going to take them. If Louis were here, he'd be glad to oblige us. But since he isn't, we'll just go ahead and help ourselves. Laurie, see what you can find out in the kitchen. All right. There's probably some coffee on the stove. That's what we need more. Keep away from that door. Go ahead, Laurie. Oh. Laurie, what's the matter? When Laurie screamed, Jim ran out into the kitchen. The girl pointed to a body lying on the floor. Look, Jim, he's dead. Right. It's Louis Michel. He's been murdered. And now you're covered, mister. Huh? Drop that gun and reach for the ceiling. Move. Get it, Barney. Right. And get some ropes and tie him up good. We'll finish the job. At the moment Laurie opened the door of the kitchen, the sergeant and Lee drove to the top of a rise less than half a mile from the roadhouse. And the sergeant called out to King to stop. Looking. Oh, yes, yes. Hold on. You recognize any of those dogs out in front of the cabin, Lee? Yes. One of the teams belongs to Jim. We've caught them. And you'll be going on alone from here. Right. There's a line of woods over there at the left that runs behind the cabin. You can follow that and they won't be able to see you. I'm heading straight down the trail, Sergeant. Jim won't shoot at me. You're sure of that? Certain. He won't give me any trouble. Maybe, maybe Laurie will forgive me sometime. I think you've passed your test, Lee. Now, there's one thing I can tell you that'll make it a little easier. What's that? The charge isn't murder. Smoke's going to recover. Really? Doctor's sure of it. Of course, Jim did shoot first. But Smoke told him to go for his guns. Yes, I know. But I think he'll be acquitted when he comes to trial. Then, why, it isn't so bad after all, Sergeant. Of course not. Uh, Will you wait here? King and I will be around in case you need us. All right. I'll see you later, Sergeant. (laughs) Easy, boy. You wondering why we aren't going along? Well, as a matter of fact, we are, King. We're going to leave the team over in the woods there and follow the trees down to the cabin. Just in case things don't work out the way Lee thinks they will. 
Get the team on its feet. Ah! Uh, and King Thunder has been. Meanwhile, the two outlaws in the roadhouse had tied Jim and Laurie hand and foot. They had searched the cabin and found Louis's store of gold dust. But now they were preparing to leave. Why don't we finish him off? We'll be over the border before anybody finds him. Let us go with you. No, Jim, I'd rather be caught. Uh, what's that? We want to get over the border, too. I'm wanted for a shooting in Dawson. So that's why you were so quick with your gun. Uh, what do we care whether they get caught or not? We don't. But if the police are after them, they might be close. Yeah, that's right. Hey, listen. Uh, the dogs are acting up. Somebody may be coming. Take a look. Not the window. It's all frosted over. The door. Oh, yeah. Man's coming down the trail. Give me a hand. We'll drag this guy over to the door and see if he recognizes him. Okay. Uh, easy. Uh, 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 lift him up. Uh, now look. Is he a Maori? Yes. He's after us. I can't figure out how he made it from Dawson so fast. He must have left his team back on the trail. What are we going to do? We're going to help the Northwest Mounted Police get their man. Huh? Untie this one first. Then the girl. Keep them both covered while you're doing it. You're not going to let that money come in here, are you? Why not? Get those rubs untied first. Okay. Now listen. You say the smarties after you. Easy. Okay. You're going to let them arrest you. What about us? We'll be out in the kitchen. The door will be open a little so we can see. We'll keep these two covered all the time. But if they make one false move, they'll stop lead. There. Why don't we plug the money? We don't want the Northwest mounted after us. Of course, if he starts for the kitchen, we'll have to give it to him. Easy. But if either of you two tip him off, you'll get shot first. Do you understand that? We understand. You finished with the girl? Yeah. Come on, out in the kitchen. How close is he, Jim? Wait till I take a look. Almost here. I'm almost glad it's over. It isn't. You're not going to try to get away. No, Laurie. But as soon as we get out of this cabin, I'm going to tell Lee about those two in the kitchen. Here he is. All right, Jim. You're under arrest. We've been waiting for you, Lee. What's that? Yes, we... We've talked it over, Lee. And we decided it's better to face the music. We're going back with you. And you don't blame me because I have to do this, Laurie? Uh, no, Lee. I understand. It's your due. Oh, that's wonderful. And I have some good news. Smoke isn't dead, Jim. Oh. No. He's going to get well. It's wonderful. And my guess is that Jim will be acquitted when he comes to trial. Well, well, let's get started. Uh, yes, let's. Why? Why not? Well, personally, after traveling all night, I'm hungry. And I imagine the sergeant and his team are, too. The sergeant? Uh, he's waiting for us up at the top of the rise. Uh, you two may have eaten, but we haven't. Yeah, well, where's Louis? He, uh, he isn't here. Yeah, doesn't matter. I'll rustle some grub myself. Oh, no, Lee. Uh, sit down. I'll get something. I'll help you. Oh, please don't. You stay right here. It won't take me a minute. Sergeant Preston and King had kept to the cover of the woods until they were directly in back of the cabin. As they started toward the back door, the scent of death reached King. He looked up into his master's face and whimpered his concern. Something wrong, boy? Something you don't like going on in there? I can't hear anything. I can't believe that Lee would have much trouble with Jim after he tells him the real situation. You still don't like it, King? Well, let's see what's going on. The sergeant stopped at one of the kitchen windows. He scraped away a little of the frost that covered it and looked into the kitchen. He saw two men with guns drawn and Laurie whispering to them as she worked at the stove. The sergeant checked his own gun. In the large front room of the cabin, Lee rose from his chair. Hey, where are you going? Uh, out in the kitchen. Want to talk with Laurie. You'd better not leave me alone. I might make a break for it. I don't think you will. Lee, don't go out there. What's the matter with you? Take your hands off me. I'm telling you that you can't go out there. Now, you've got to believe me. Why not? Laurie's out there. I don't see any reason why I can't go. Lee, believe me. Wait a minute. If there's something wrong, I'm going to find out what it is. You have found out, Marty. What? Up with your hands. Don't you? Get in there. Too bad you couldn't take these kids' advice and start back for Dawson right away. Get us gun, Barney. Yeah. Who are these men? They're killers. They've just murdered Louis. They had you covered, all of us covered, ever since you came in. There was no way we could warn you. Couldn't sit quiet and wait for his food. No. You had to come out in the kitchen. Is the body out there? Yes. This has gone far enough, Judd. Three shots and we're safe. Let them live and we're not. You're right. 
You get the policeman. I'll get the girl and boy. Which policeman? Oh, what? In the kitchen. It's Sergeant Preston. Another one. Don't turn around, either of you, until you drop those guns. I'll show you. Get him, Kate! <laughs> Great dog King leaped for Judd as he whirled and tried to fire at the sergeant. Barney also turned and fired. And the sergeant's gun spoke at the same time. Judd was knocked to the floor by King's rush, and his shot went wild. So did Barney's. The sergeant's bullet caught him in the arm. Get Judd's gun, Lee. I have it. I'll take yours, Barney. Jim, see if you can find a bandage for his arm. Sure, Sergeant. All right, King. Let him up now. Where did you come from, Sergeant? Came down through the woods and in the back way. You said you'd be around if I needed you, Sergeant. We certainly did. They were going to kill us. They did kill Louis. Yes, I know. I saw him. So you've reached the end of the trail, Judd. Uh, you know him, Sergeant? Judd Trent. The other one is Barney Gordon. They've been suspected of a number of crimes. Now we have the evidence against them. It's been a good day's work, Lee. Well, I didn't have much to do with it. Laurie, has Lee told you that Smoke will live? Oh, yes, and we're happy about it, Sergeant. We sure are. And you've forgiven Lee for arresting Jim, Laurie? But there's nothing to forgive. He was right and we were wrong. Oh, I'm glad you wouldn't listen to me, Lee. You know, if I'm going to marry a Mountie... I want him to be a good one. Lee's proved he's a good one. Thanks, Sergeant. As for you, Jim... I've learned my lesson, Sergeant. No more gambling for one thing, and that's my gun on the table. I promise you word of honor that I'll never wear it again. How about it, King? <laughs> Judd and Barney are going to jail. Laurie and Lee will be uh, inviting us to their wedding. And Jim's going to turn over a new leaf. You satisfied? <laughs> Yes, I agree, King. It just about takes care of everything. The case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. When it comes to breakfast, here's a can't-be-copied treat that's a standout. Just do this. Pour some Quaker-puffed wheat into a bowl until it's about half full. Then fill it up the rest of the way with Quaker puffed rice. Add milk and sweeten with sugar, honey, or syrup. Take it from me, that combination of breakfast cereals shot from guns really hits the spot. Order both kinds tomorrow. Mind you, they're never sold in bags or bulk, but come only in the famous big Quaker red and blue package. That's tasty Quaker puffed wheat, delicious Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas... A feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, a breakfast cereal shot from gut. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of... The man with the red hair. His name was Roger Faraday, and all of Dawson, including the Northwest Mounted Police, thought he was a respectable businessman. It was only King who knew him for what he really was, a cold-blooded killer. And the best dog on the force nearly lost his life in trying to prove it. This is King's own story, and I know you'll enjoy it. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health. From Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow, because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving.